Cleaned, restored, renewed, one of 500 Buddhas returns to its place on the terraces that drape the hill. Silence and stillness. Noise and movement. Silence and stillness again, a journey through time lasting more than a thousand years. Borobudur was built three centuries before Angkor Wat and four centuries before the great Gothic cathedrals of Europe. Set in the rich green landscape of central Java, in Indonesia, Borobudur is a monument of Mahayana Buddhism. Rising to a height of 30 meters, the terraced pyramid is crowned by a sealed and void central stupa. The sides of the square base are 123 meters long. The lower rectangular terraces, bordered by balustrades, carry altogether three kilometers of walls, decorated with 1,460 panels of finely carved reliefs, each telling a story in stone. The first panels depict scenes from the life of the Buddha of history, from the time of his birth until, at Benares, he proclaimed a new faith. The pilgrim enters by the east gate, turns to his left, and mounts terrace after terrace, keeping the monument always on his right, following the reliefs in sequence. Son of King Sododana and Queen Mahamaya, the Prince Siddhartha, as he was called, was born into the ruling family of a small Himalayan kingdom during the 6th century BC. Prince Siddhartha grew up in great luxury and in due course took for his wife a princess who bore him a son. At the age of 29, Siddhartha renounced his riches, left his family and began a life of meditation as a wandering monk. Many temptations and tribulations beset him during his search for truth. Overcoming them all, Siddhartha at last reached Benares, where, as the Buddha, the Enlightened One, he preached his first sermon on what he had learned. Four meetings, or signs, are said to have played a decisive role in the future Buddha's destiny. Gravity, the force which had first held the stones together, had begun to pull them down the slopes of the hill. <coughs> Indonesia, as a newly independent state, did not have the means of saving Borobudur on its own. In 1973, the government signed an agreement with UNESCO to mount a large-scale rescue operation involving the dismantling and reconstruction of the most seriously threatened lower terraces. The present restoration work is concentrated or is only engaging this central part, that means the Rupa Gatu, which is actually that part full of reliefs. At present, we have finished the northern and the southern part of the monument, whereas the western and the eastern part are also for a good deal reconstructed. Forthcoming six months will be spent for the final stage of the reconstruction of the restoration, and that means that we still have to reconstruct several parts of the balustrades and also the floors.
The great task had actually begun as long ago as 1953. Under the supervision of Indonesian and foreign specialists, the first terraces were carefully dismantled. Carrying the blocks on bamboo poles, the Indonesian workmen repeated in the opposite direction, statue by statue, stone by stone, the gestures and movements of the original builders of Borobudur a thousand years ago. With the help of the international campaign, more modern techniques were introduced. The basic material in which the monument was constructed is andesite, a pale volcanic rock, porous and rough surfaced. Cut into regular shapes, the terrace blocks were fitted together without mortar, using double dovetail or interlocking joints. Each block was numbered and carefully listed for reference, and a computer kept track of all the operations. The numbered stones were then stored on pallets to await their return. More than 300,000 paving blocks, as well as 580 sculptures and carved panels, were removed from the monument and stocked at the foot of the hill. On the whole, the various elements were remarkably well preserved. The puzzle had slipped, but the pieces were still intact. Kita bayangkan ketika itu ada sejumlah arsitek zaman dulu yang merencanakan pembangunan itu. Kemudian ada pegawai-pegawainya, karyawannya memotong tukang-tukang batu. Batu-batu yang bulat-bulat itu dipotong-potong segipat dan dibuat supaya keduanya bisa dipasangkan. Yang satu di bagian sisi ditonjolkan, yang satu di belakang lubang dan dijadikan pasak. Nah, semua batu-batu itu memang dipasang-pasangkan satu sama lain. Dan ketika dia rubuh pada waktu itu, kita harus mencari pasangan-pasangannya itu. Nah, para para Karyawan Indonesia itu dulu sejak zaman Prambanan, Memugar, sampai di sini juga mereka mencari batu-batu sampai ke seluruh desa itu. Jadi batu-batu mana yang bisa dipasangkan satu sama lain dan tidak bisa diukur seperti ahli kematimetika. Intuisi mereka bisa menentukan bahwa ini pasangannya. Kepala-kepala arca yang patah itu juga bisa disambungkan ke dalam badannya oleh mereka karena intuisinya mereka dalam itu. Mereka yang disebut sebagai stone maker, pengumpul batu-batu dan dipasangkan satu-satu. Dan mengumpulkan batu-batu itu dari desa-desa sekitar. Bahkan saya juga pernah ikut mengumpulkannya, misalnya di desa ada sebuah lumpang penduduk, dan ketika kita buka lumpangnya, dibalik, ternyata itu adalah bagian dari stupa. Dan ternyata banyak batu-batu itu dipakai oleh penduduk menjadi tangga. Bahkan ketika dibalik ada reliefnya. Jadi ketika batu itu bangunannya lepas semua, dia bertebaran kemana-mana dan dipakai oleh penduduk. Tapi kemudian kita ganti satu-satu, yang punya lumpang kita ganti, supaya kita punya yang asli.